I have an old exam question that turned out to be a little bit too hard. I gave this problem 22 years ago and it turned out to be way too hard. I got to tell you folks, back in the day when I was, was young and, and, and uh, skinny, um, I didn't have much of a clue as to what a good question was on an exam. And the average on most of our exams were down around 40%. It was, a, it was a terrible time. It was the black years. And people come up to me in Bozeman and say, Oh, I had your class. It was when? Oh, 20 years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So it could be worse, people. It could be worse. Now, because this problem was difficult, it turns out to be a wonderful teaching problem. And so that's what we're going to do, and we'll be grateful that it's not on our exam. What we have is a column of air that is four and a quarter meters long. We have a cylinder that's five meters long, and we adjust the length of the air column by putting water in the bottom. And we just have uh, three quarters of a meter of water in that uh, bottom there. Now the first part of this problem asks us to find the fundamental frequency, F1. Now folks, I cooked all the numbers in this problem so that they would be easy, so that they would work out really, really nice if we assume it's a little bit cold today, okay? So what we're going to do in this problem is instead of taking 343 meters per second for the speed of sound, we're going to round that down to 340. So in this problem, let V is equal to 340 meters per second, the sound speed. Okay, so it's not room temperature. Now, when I saw people flailing on this problem, struggling with really hard, uh, messy mathematics, I made an announcement in the class, you know, make this approximation, and that helped a little, but still people had trouble. So, with your neighbor, find the fundamental frequency of that two. will draw a wavelength. This uh, bottom where the water is has to be a node because the molecules can't move that way. It's, it's a, a, a barrier. The open end has to be an anti-node. And the, the fundamental wavelength is the longest wavelength that will fit. And it's the one that goes straight from a node to an anti-node like that. Now, that's only half a football. It takes two footballs to be a wavelength, and so that means a wavelength, my lambda, is four times the length of that half football. Now, if, if that didn't speak to your soul, just use this equation. Number of footballs times lambda over two is equal to the length of the system. I've got half a football there times lambda over 2 is equal to 4.25 meters. That means lambda is equal to 4 times 4.25 meters or 17 meters. I bring that up here and I say 340 meters per second is equal to F, it's the first harmonic, times 17 meters. 
That gives me F1 is equal to 20 hertz. See if your neighbor got 20 hertz. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so first we found the fundamental wavelength. We, we drew a picture of it. We recognized that it was one fourth of a wavelength. So we multiplied the length of the air column by four, got 17 meters, and that's what got us the 20 hertz. Now, if I were to just blow air across the top of this air column, making white noise, 20 hertz is a sound that would resonate. And we might or might not hear that because it's right on the edge of, of human hearing. Uh, but still, that would resonate um, in the tube. What that means is that if I brought a tuning fork that was 20 hertz, I could excite the fundamental. Now, if I brought a tuning fork that was 40 hertz, would I get an echo? Would I get a, a booming sound out of that air column? No. Why? Yeah, only the odd harmonics are going to resonate with this system. So this would not, but if I did 60 hertz, it would resonate, and it would resonate with the third harmonic, and that would then look like like that. Now, in the next part of the problem, we take a tuning fork that has a frequency of 340 hertz, and we ask which harmonic is going to resonate with that uh, tuning fork. Which harmonic is going to resonate with that tuning fork? <laughs> Pretty easy. The nth harmonic is always n times the fundamental, or the first harmonic. In this case, we're exciting the nth harmonic at 340 hertz. This air column has to resonate or sing at the same frequency at which it's being tickled or uh, perturbed. That's going to be 340 hertz. That's going to be equal to n times the fundamental of 20 hertz, and that gives me an n value of 17. It's the 17th harmonic. Now that's what the third harmonic looks like. What would the 17th harmonic look like? How would you draw that? How many footballs would be in the tube? Talk to your neighbor. What would the 17th harmonic look like? Can anybody help me out? 8.5. Excellent. How did you get that? Perfect. Okay. If the third harmonic has three half footballs, and the fifth harmonic has five half footballs, and the seventh harmonic has seven half footballs, then the seventeenth harmonic has seventeen half footballs. Well, 17 half footballs is eight and a half footballs. And so what it would look like is eight footballs and a half at the top. Now there's another one. I think that's the best way to get it. There's another way to do it. And that is to find out how big your footballs are. Okay? If I use that wave equation again, well now, V equals F lambda, I'm doing it for the 17th harmonic. This is 340 meters per second. This is 340 hertz. 
That makes lambda 17 easy to calculate. It's one meter. But that's two footballs. A wavelength is two footballs. And so that means one football is half a meter. And so the other way to do it is just ask yourself, how many half meters do I have in four and a quarter meters? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. You just set up a proportion? You could do that too. You set up a proportional. That's all I'm doing is proportional reasoning. Yeah? Now that's going to look like that. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight and a half. Now, folks, the reason this echoes, the reason that this gives me a booming sound, is because it fits the boundary conditions. Namely, a node at this closed end and an anti-node at the open end. Now, if I lower the water level a little bit, that goes away. These footballs are tied to that frequency. Okay? And so if I lower this water just a little bit, that frequency no longer resonates with this air column. The, the echo goes away. But if I keep lowering the water, I can lower it to a point where the echo comes back strong as ever. And again, it sounds like it's the same echo. It's still being uh, played at 340 hertz. I still hear the same note that I heard before. How far would I have to lower the water in order to have that echo come back again? 0.5 meters. What, what's that? 0.5 meters. 0.5 meters, right, because I have to fit another football in there. So I'm going to have to lower my water level half a meter. But now I'm not playing the 17th harmonic anymore. Which harmonic am I playing now? 19. The 19th. Well, wait a minute. If it's still 340 hertz, how can it be the 19th harmonic and the 17th harmonic. Well, by dropping this level of the water, I change the fundamental. And so now the fundamental is not 20 hertz anymore. It's something lower than 20 hertz. And now 19 times the new fundamental is 340, whereas it used to be 17 times 20 gave me the 340. 